Good morning, beloved in God. Good morning. On this hot and steamy Sunday morning, we welcome you to the United Church of Clinton. I'm Reverend Marilyn Wilcox, pastor. And we have a few announcements. We continue to collect non-perishable food for wheat. You can bring that in any time you come to church. During the first hymn, we will continue to collect funds for the Ukrainian relief efforts. Remember Ruth, Eunice, Art, and June in your prayers. They are our homebound parishioners. Diaconate will meet Tuesday night at 7.30. Worship planning meets Thursday night at 6.30. Um, our book study is coming up on September 18th. And this read this month will be A Simple Path by Mother Teresa. And it's going to be, the discussion is going to be facilitated by Teresa Sontag. You may join us for that via Zoom. And are there any other announcements? Let us go to God and prepare our hearts, minds, and spirits for worship with the ringing of the bell and the time for centering. Good morning everyone in the sanctuary and beyond. We will now be joined together in this morning's call to worship, which you will find in your bulletin if you are in the sanctuary, or it will appear on your screens if you are watching elsewhere. So our call to worship. Our God knows us intimately. God, you knew us before we knew ourselves. Our God is holy. Holy God, you consecrate us. Our God will reassure. Holy God, you give us words to speak. Our first piece this morning when we raise our voices in song is in our chalice hymnal number 75. 75. I was there to hear your morning cry, and the words will appear for those who are not present in the sanctuary with us. So um, I just wish to share with you the joy of this particular piece that we are joining together in singing first. Look who is talking to us in this piece of music. It's God. We're not having our opinions here. This is God telling us what's what. Okay, so I was there to hear your morning cry, and Kate will play it once through for us. Thank you, Kate.
Let us join together in the prayer of the day as printed in the bulletin and appearing on the screen. God, we rejoice that even as you placed us in the womb and called us forth, you called us forth to build and to plant. Give us the blueprint as we build and bless our hearts as we plant. We rejoice in knowing that our steps are guided by you, and you are reliable. We delight ourselves in your presence, and give thanks as you deliver us from fear, and let your love have its way in us. Embolden us to speak your truth to power, and let the power of your truth always be evident in us. Amen. And now let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. Those in the sanctuary may move around, and those who are at home, just imagine all the people you would wish to pass the peace of Christ today. And we will sing it twice through, Peace Be With You. Thank you, Kate. everyone. Our first
first scripture reading this morning is from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. And just a word, a quick word about who was Jeremiah. Well, Jeremiah is one of the major prophets in both, in both the Judaic and the Christian faiths. Uh, he lived, we think, around 650 uh, BC and died um, in 570. Uh, he's sometimes referred to as the weeping prophet. And the reason for that is that he is the author of the Book of Lamentations and also the books of kings in the Old Testament. Uh, he had someone to help him. He had a scribe and a disciple, because that's a lot of words to write in one lifetime. What is very interesting about Jeremiah too, though, is that unlike a lot of the prophets, he includes quite a lot of biographical information in the book in his name. The scripture reading this morning, though, comes from the very, very beginning of the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. And it ties in with the theme that we've just been singing about, God calling us and being there when we were born. This is about Jeremiah being called by God. The word of the Lord came to me, saying... Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I anointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to, and say whatever I command of you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. And this is the end of our first scripture reading this morning. So now let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer for transformation and new life. Transforming God, too often we have been afraid to speak out against the injustices of this world. We have worshipped in ways that made us feel good rather than honor you in our words and deeds. Show us the path to faithful living. Show us how to build beloved and just communities. Teach us how to do your work in this world. Empower us to plant seeds of love, faith, and hope. May we bloom where we have been planted to your glory. Amen. The mystery we name God leads us into all truth. Feel the gentle nudges without and within, helping us to course correct. Life in the grace in the spirit is not static, and neither are we. Let the grace of God help us to build that which lasts and plant that which nourishes.
A message for all God's children today. Our next scripture reading that I'll be reading shortly deals with the bent over woman. The scripture tells of a story of healing And if you feel bent over this morning, something that's holding you back, something that's holding you down, a worry, a concern, a physical ailment, Jesus speaks to you this morning. So for the children's message, the message for all God's children, I want you to focus on Christ in the portrait. And I want you to focus on his hand reaching out, the healing hand, the hand of touch that will heal the woman. And as you continue to look up and focus on the hand reaching out, and I want to pray this prayer for you. Lord Jesus, each generation finds itself bound up and bent over crippled by diseases that will not let us go, pressured by policies that keep the marginalized on the margins, tied into knots as the right and the left bark and bite into a chaotic screech. At times, even our own religiosity interferes with our ability to stand up straight and to see you to see what you are about in this world. Unbinding, healing, setting free. With a touch, the crippled woman was straightened up, unbound, healed, set free. Set us free, Jesus, set your children free. Set even us free, Jesus. And we rejoice at all the wonderful things that occur when we feel your healing hand. Amen. Amen. And so now we will join together and lift our voices and sing number 526 in the chalice hymnal. I invite you to stand if you are comfortable or to remain seated if you are more comfortable. And this is the gift of love. The music is based on an old, on a folks melody, but the actual words that we are going to sing this morning is based on Corinthians chapter 13, verses one to three. The gift of love and Kate will play us one through for us. Thank you, Kate. I mm-hmm. 
seated. At this time, let us lift up concerns and joys. Any takers? I am, um, this is a, a strange joy and concern. I don't know if you're familiar with the plant loose strife. It's a beautiful purple plant. It is highly invasive. It's running rampant over Rauscher Farm. And we have beetles on it, leaf-eating beetles. But now I look around and I see it everywhere in the region. So I'm going to have to embark on a campaign yeah. to engage many to try and beat it back because it, it takes over, reduces diversity. So it's a joy for how beautiful it is and a concern that it's grow, grow, growing. So um, <clears throat> my second is continuing prayers for my friend Tom. Um, he had his first, there was a chemo last week and it didn't go too well. So continuing prayers for Tom, for his wife, Marion, and their son, Justin. Continuing prayers for Pastor Carol, who has now moved as of this week, our former Pastor Carol, from Clinton to Milford to be closer to her daughter. Um, and, and then unfortunately her cat had seizures, so she had to deal with a sick cat as well. So mm. prayers for Pastor Carol and um, the kitty. And if anyone has any time this week, please uh, contact me because there's a need to clean out the apartment in Clinton, which Jim and I will be helping with. So if you feel you have any time this week, please email me. Um, so that is a, a prayer concern. Um, I'm also looking here at, um, to remind everyone who is not with us today that we do invite you all to lift your joys and your concerns in the comments section of our Facebook pages, the one that live streams and then records for later uh, participation by people at a more convenient time for them. And we also have the United Church of Clinton is a second Facebook page where we post weekly and you can you know, send a comment and raise your joys and concerns there. And also email us at the church so that we may lift and celebrate your joys and we may lift up your concerns. And Deb Bodak sent word to me that she would like us to be in prayer for Dickie and Paula. So let us now go to God in prayer. Grace-filled God, we read the scripture and discover that Jesus could set a woman free from a burden of illness that lasted 18 years. He spoke the words and laid his hands upon her. Immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. Can we understand such a remarkable gift? when we are bent over and unable to stand up straight from the burdens of the world in our own lives, we long to be in your presence. Help us to hear you calling to us. When we are looking down and our world is wrapped in pain, lift our eyes and our ears to see you standing with us. May we hear your words releasing us as the touch of your healing presence does its work. We long to stand up straight and praise you with all our being like that unnamed woman from long ago. Her healing came on the Sabbath. It was against the rules for those who set the rules. Help us to find that Sabbath that can bring such a complete healing. We now pray for those names lifted up, Dickie and Paula. Pastor Carol, Gloria Pop, Harold, Ruth, June, Art, Eunice, Tom, and all other names that we lift now in silence unto you that are on our minds but we have not spoken aloud. <coughs> we 
We pray all this in Jesus' name, the one who comes to heal and make us all whole. Amen. So the scripture reading I have been referring to this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, verse, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Jesus heals a crippled woman on the Sabbath. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman who was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he laid his hands upon her. And immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leaders said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from that what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. So ends the reading. So your moment of holy humor is something that I've used before, but maybe you haven't heard in a while. And it goes like this. Little Philip was spending the weekend with his grandmother after a particularly trying week in infant school. His grandmother decided to take him to the park on a Saturday morning and it had been snowing all night and everything was beautiful. His grandmother commented, doesn't it look like an artist painted the scenery? Did you know that God painted this just for you? Yes, replied Philip. God did it, and he did it with his left hand. This confused his grandmother, so she asked him, what makes you say that God did this with his left hand? Well, said Philip, we learned on Sunday school last week that Jesus sits on God's right hand. <laughs> so let's go to God in prayer. Oh God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our holy rock and redeemer. Amen. Our second scripture passage this morning was one of my mother's favorite passages, the woman bent over. Jesus does the unthinkable in the synagogue leader's eyes. He extends a healing touch to straighten out the back of the woman on all of all days, the Sabbath day. Jesus continues to usher forth an emphasis on the act of healing and it extends a healing reign of sorts. This is not the first time Jesus heals in the Bible text, but it is one that captures the attention of the synagogue leaders. How dare Jesus heal on the Sabbath day? 
when things should not be accomplished, instead be focused on the act of inward prayer and non-work type activities. Jesus' healing was considered to be work. Jesus goes against the norm, as Jesus usually did. He moves forward, he acts, and does so immediately to bring relief, relief to the bent over woman. Let's break down the various characters in this passage. First, the bent over woman. How often do we consider ourselves to be bent over? Physical afflictions might cast difficulties upon our life's path. Mental and physical afflictions get in the way. We find ourselves grasping for help and relief. We often get impatient for resolutions from the pain that causes the infliction. This woman we hear about is physically in need of that relief in order to function and carry forth with her work and hopes and dreams for the future. I want you to imagine for your moment, for a moment, your body bent over like the woman's. Do that for a moment, and you may even let your body bend forth. The woman bent over. And then just try doing, imagine doing a few ordinary things. What is it like for you to actually move and see where you're going? What does it take for you to make eye contact with someone? What's at eye level? What are you seeing most of the time? Maybe people's feet. How high could you reach if you needed to buy something from a merchant's stand at the market? 18 years of a bent over life. Can you imagine? 18 years can seem like an eternity. Think of your children at 18 years, all the years that have passed until that point. After 18 years, would you expect anything to ever change? And yet on this Sabbath day, everything changed for this bent over woman. And then the moment when all seems well and she is lifted from her afflictions and she's healed, her response is, hallelujah. Phew. A big phew. Can we all envision a moment of being healed? A moment when we feel, find relief and given a moment to sigh that relief. Finally, a moment not to experience t pain or turmoil. We all yearn for it. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it does not, sometimes it takes time. Yet for this woman, her moment has come and she feels so amazing. Then in enters another character in the story, the religious figure who questions Jesus' act of healing on the Sabbath day. This individual is bound to laws of what is interpreted in the Hebrew texts. There is no way around this act of Jesus. He must be held accountable. So this religious figure speaks out. He verbally attacks this act of healing and is in conflict with it. How can this be? Then the character of Jesus. He proclaims that this woman should not only be set free from the prison of her own body and spirit on the Sabbath day, but also points out that she is a cherished, get this, 
She is a cherished and beloved daughter of Abraham. Jesus is, in essence, asking the synagogue leader, and everyone gathered there that day to check and challenge their own hearts to reflect on the way they had come to see the bent-over woman. Jesus restores not only her posture, but her dignity. She is a beloved daughter of Abraham. She is worthy. She is restored. She counts. Perspective here is key. How did people see her and how did they see her once she was healed? They perhaps saw her as afflicted and therefore not worthy. Yet Jesus turns it all around and says that she is worthy. We think of many things that cause people to feel bent over. Where we were born, perhaps, where we live now, how old we are, what color our skin is, how much money we make, what education we have, how much pain we've experienced, how much love we've experienced and who we love. Then there's once again the perspective of the synagogue leader, the guy who got all bent out of shape about Jesus working on the Sabbath. We can put ourselves in his shoes too, probably more easily than any of us would like to admit. We too can act as that religious figure did, we all have our biases, we all do. We need to correct our thinking. The woman found healing through a simple touch. But that touch was much more than that. It freed the woman to live out unencumbered, an unencumbered life, bent over, healing, a declaration of blessing and belonging. This is the story and it is sweet. The story is for you and for me. Let us pray. Heavenly God of Abraham, by your hands we receive healing, wholeness, and release from the trials of life that bend our spirits. Alleluia and amen.
Amen. So we would ask that out of your abundance that you may give, that you may share a portion of what you have received. You may leave your offering to the side, or if you're watching virtually, you may send a check to the church office or go to our website and go to our donate little button. We appreciate your generosity. The divine source is one from whom all blessings flow. We have an eternal invitation to bring our resources to God's house to use for the building of the kingdom. And as seed that there might be a continual harvest, these acts reflect the God who knows us and the God who calls us. Amen. join with me in the dedication prayer. Fount of every blessing, receive these gifts in the joy in which we bring them. May they bless your church universally, our community, and our world. May none suffer lack, and may we always give from generous hearts. May we always take joy in being blessed to give and to share with you and each other. Amen. Amen. We began our worship service this morning by um, hearing what God said to us. We sang joyfully God's words. And our last time today that we raise our voices together, we are going to hear the words of Jesus in the Lord of the Dance. You will find the words in the bulletin or they will appear on the screen. It is a traditional melody and it has a number of verses, each followed by a refrain. So Kate will play the verse and the refrain for us and then we will sing joyfully, Lord of the Dance. Thank you, Kate.
As you depart from this sacred space, do so fearlessly, for God's word is with you and in you. Go and build a beloved community wherever you roam and plant seeds of love, faith, and hope. Amen. <laughs>